this. Yes, as uh, mentioned, my name is Fritjof. Um, if you try to pronounce that, you can think of the fridge off, turn the fridge off. Nobody ever does that, but a lot of people feel that it is helpful. Um, I am a first generation settler on the stolen and unceded land of the Silks Okanagan people. Indigenous people have been stewards of this land for time immemorial, and I'm committed to learning as much as I can about the culture we replaced and about the way the Silks people passed on skills. I work at Okanagan College, mostly on the Kelowna campus. I'm one of the instructors for our women in trades and trade sampler programs. Since the disruption of regular classes by the COVID-19 pandemic, virtual classrooms and online learning received a huge boost worldwide. Uh, and it seems inevitable that this field will continue to attract increased attention. These developments come with their own challenges and opportunities, and virtual reality applications will certainly be part of the future of learning. We will start this presentation with a short explanation on how the, our brain works in order to understand the vulnerabilities and opportunities. We will look at what virtual reality is, and I will introduce some of the dangers um, that have been connected with virtual reality, especially in gaming. I will speak to some of the benefits of the application of virtual reality tools can have. And lastly, I will introduce some ways virtual reality can be used for education and job training. And finally, I will wrap it up and you will have the opportunity to ask questions. Uh, my journey of researching this topic uh, on my journey of researching this topic, I have discovered a lot of sources. I will put a link to the sources in the chat after the presentation, and I will post them under the video in the forum and on my blog. You've had most of the neurons in your brain since birth. And most of those will stick around for the rest of your life. Yet your brain is constantly changing. Learn a new skill or language and your brain reacts by strengthening or weakening the connections between neurons, even creating new ones. Each new experience shapes your brain to become uniquely yours. And your brain's capacity to change is vital. A brain damaged by injury or disease attempts to regain lost abilities, rerouting connections and sometimes even growing new neurons, but quite slowly. Still, a healthy brain needs neurons to die off too. During development, the human brain grows excess neurons. Early in life, the brain eliminates those extra cells to keep only those connections you need. Later on, unused neurons can wither away. Physical and mental exercise preserves them keeping your brain healthy. The regeneration of the brain is called neuroplasticity. Experiences and learning cause our brain to create more connections and even regrow neurons over time. As we will discover later in this, uh, there is evidence that by stimulating real life experiences, Virtual reality can help neuroplasticity in astounding ways. Fellow Trekkies will recognize this picture as a holodeck simulation on the Starship Enterprise. These holodeck simulations give us a good general idea of how virtual reality could evolve. For now, VR headsets and helmets are the standard. Intenta Digital defines virtual reality like this. Virtual Realities, or VR, is a computer-generated environment that either stimulates the physical world or offers a different experience. Users are immersed in their surroundings through a computer or video console or via virtual reality headset or helmet. The history of virtual reality dates back to, 1930, to the 1930s with the publication of the science fiction novel Pygmalion Spectacles by Stanley Weinbaum, 
which introduced the concept of holographic virtual reality. However, it wasn't until the 1990s that virtual reality became widely accessible to the public through the launch of arcade games and machines. And actually, if you, uh, this uh, Pygmalion Spectacles book from the 1930s, it's a small book and it's available for free. Um, reading that, it's, it's really spooky what the uh, Stanley Weinbaum um, envisioned a virtual reality would be like, and it's very, very close to what it is like right now. There are different levels of virtual and augmented reality. Non-immersive, users engage with the computer-generated environment without being totally immersed. Augmented reality falls under this category. You might remember the popular game of Pokemon Go that projects game characters on the user's phone overlaid over their actual surroundings. Then there is a semi-immersive, and that's users usually wearing a headset or VR helmet are visually immersed, but still connected to their surroundings. And then full immersive virtual reality is where users feel detached from the real world. In these settings, users usually wear VAR headsets and headphones that transmit the matching audio of the simulation. Virtual reality simulations can feel like we are experiencing the scenario in real life. As much as this is exciting, it is also a tool that can teach us wrong information in a very convincing way. Although virtual reality applications are used in different areas like healthcare, education, aviation, and architecture, the online gaming industry is by far the biggest user of the technology. That is why most of the case studies about the effects concentrate on this user group. VR gaming can disrupt the sensory system and cause similar symptoms to motion sickness that is called virtual reality sickness. Symptoms are nausea, dizziness, headaches, fatigue, and loss of balance. But I also have found medical research that says that these effects are temporary. The bigger problem seems to be that VR can increase online gaming addiction program problems. There are some drawbacks that stand in the way of making this technology more widely used. One problem we ran into um, when we had to switch to online instruction at Okanagan College is the fact that not everyone has access to adequate technology and affordable broadband internet access from home. While online classrooms offer a great opportunity, this technology gap could be even worse if we would require VR headsets to participate in classes. Today's VR headsets easily cost over $1,000 and do not serve any additional purpose. It is unrealistic to expect students to invest in this technology unless they are studying the development of applications, for example. Virtual, virtual reality largely relies on visual input. This excludes students with visual impairments. Even people that don't have 3D vision are disadvantaged in using the technology. Even though the technology exists for several years already, it has the widest distribution in the online gaming world. Due to the large variety of smartphone sizes, manufacturers of VR goggles have stopped producing headsets that utilize phones. Currently, that means that we need to invest in standalone headsets that often rely on owning a matching game console. Even though there are interesting VR training tools available, I feel like the cost factor of specialized hardware stands in the way of a wider acceptance and development. As we learned in the first video, experiences and learning stimulate brain development by encouraging connections between neurons and even growing new neurons in the brain. Virtual reality technology can be very helpful in healthcare in many ways. For example, improving physical health. Instead of spending hours of sitting in front of a computer screen, learning or playing games, VR applications encourage users to move around 
or even exercise while being, while being immersed in the application. Mental health. Immersive video games can be a great way to relax. In treatment of mental health issues, I found a study by a group of researchers that shows that virtual reality can be effective for supporting the treatment of anxiety and depression. It can also be effective uh, when treating post-traumatic stress, stress disorder or PTSD, as players can confront the situations that cause them fear and anxiety in a safe and controlled environment. It can be used to over overcoming phobias. VR games can help players overcome their biggest fears, heights, flying, snakes, sharks, water or darkness in order to win the game. We often hear the term rewiring the brain and virtual reality can help immensely to accomplish this. When we talk about virtual reality, we usually think of gaming and entertainment applications, but VR has promising applications in training environments at all, uh, as well. Creating immersive experiences can improve learning in immensely. Trainees can manipulate virtual test installations and experience the effect of their actions in real time. One example would be safety training, uh, would be a safety training application where participants are tasked with performing a fire rescue. The immersed learners can actively be actively involved in the exercise without being in danger of being burned or otherwise hurt. Virtual reality can also be used to develop soft skills. We can put learners in customer service situations, for example, and make them interactive with immediate feedback inside of the application. Here's an example of a training environment for heavy equipment operators. The footage seems a little rough, but you can imagine how helpful this training can be if you're watching the content in 3D and manipulate the machinery with controllers. I have learned that after the plateau in 2022, experts expect 2023 to become a breakthrough year in VR technology. In her article in ZDNet, Stephanie Condon writes, global shipments for VR's headsets jumped 241.6% in the first quarter compared to the same period last year. With continued demand and easy easing supply driving growth. For the full year, the IDC um, expects to see 13.9 million VR headsets ship up 26.6% up from the year prior. According to the research firm, sales should surpass 20 million units in 2023, and the average selling price um, should hit, hit its peak. I certainly hope so. Customers net uh, next year should benefit from next-gen headsets from Meta, uh, but also from Pico and Sony. Apple may finally release hit its highly anticipated mixed reality headset in 2023 as well, which analysts have said to be a game changer. I would like to read you um, part of a Forbes article by Ned Cohen. What I imagine in in five to 10 years is a virtual office where we're all working from home, but can walk around and see each other in VR. We'll be able to have in-person meetings in VR and see each other's monitors, visit each other's offices and more. I think it will be so realistic that we will hardly be able to distinguish VR from real life. However, while the VR is definitely very cool and has a lot of potential, 
It is important to note that it's not quite at the level where it's comfortable to wear for work every day. The headsets are still relatively heavy, and it can be a bit annoying to wear for long periods of time. Additionally, the display quality is not yet high enough to make the switch from a monitor. While the graphics are undoubtedly impressive, they don't quite match up to the clarity and resolution of a traditional monitor or television screen. Later in the article, he says, VR is, very is a very exciting facet of technology that has a lot of potential for the future. While these headsets are not ready for widespread use yet, they're worth keeping an eye on. I am very confident that we'll see major improvements in the next five to 10 years to make it more comfortable and practical for everyday use. You can think of the MetaQuest Pro as the first iPhone. I'm, ex I'm excited to see what we'll, ha um, what we'll have 10 years from now. If you are excited about this technology, UVC offers a 10-week XR designer course starting in September. Let's sum up what we have learned about virtual reality. Strength. Because VR stimulates real life experiences, it can be used to stimulate brain development. By immersing learners uh, uh, in situations that feel real, we can reach a lasting training result. By stimulating neuroplasticity, we can even repair damage caused by traumatic events in someone's life. Weakness. Access to the technology is still an issue. If we wanted to use VR in the classroom, we would have to create something similar to a computer lab. Opportunity. Creating immersive experiences can be a huge benefit in various training scenarios. Once we either find a low threshold hardware solution or eliminate headsets altogether, virtual reality has the potential to be a game changer in medicine and education. Threat. Like a lot of technologies, virtual reality brings risks as well. Gaming addiction can be worsened, and the fact that we leave learners with visual impairments behind needs to be addressed. I think the survival of the technology will depend on how the hardware developers will be able to find a way to create wide, wide acceptance like they did with mobile phones. That brings me to the end of my presentation. So I'm going to just uh, hunt down that link for the resources. Because I didn't create a slide, it would have been a slide with very, very small print. Because as you can imagine, this was a bit of a rabbit hole. over here look do you have any questions okay hi uh, yeah go ahead yeah it, this is a really great presentation and i i it's less um less a question but just more um because yeah, i work in it industry with engineering and computing science students and seeing from a kind of at, at the young stages or infantile stages of this being developed, it's incredibly cool what's happening out there in industry already. I was able to actually experience a, a 2000 year old Mayan temple walking in and seeing lush uh, plants and what it would have looked like inside through wearing this headset. And it's um, you know, when you want to think about the implications of that, being able to walk in to understand what it would have been like in the Temple of Kings from like a million, hundreds of thousands of years ago, or understanding what the brush strokes of Van Gogh's paintings would look like, um, or, you know, anything historical like that, visiting an old medieval castle and what it would have looked like in its day with when lords and ladies were were running around and with their horses and whatever, the whole concept of this is amazing and where it's going. And I think it has the opportunity or the potential to teach in ways 
that are super exciting, but it means us as educators are going to have to adapt huge to this. No longer are we lecturers. We are now going to be incorporating the use of these tools to support le our learners. So I think it's it's changing that landscape greatly. Um, and so that's, I think it's exciting, but it, it just means a lot for us in terms of educate being educators. But this was a really great presentation. I was excited to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Vanessa, you had a question? Yeah, um, I guess, you know, I'm married to somebody who's really not into phones and everything like that. So um, we're a bit more that way in our household. So I think you touched a little bit on the aspects that you that are withdraw, like that you don't like about virtual reality, but I'd love a little bit more on where you could see it going wrong because obviously you're like super into it kind of like I'm guessing kind of like how people into their Teslas don't like to hear something bad about Teslas um they've always got an answer to why the Tesla is really amazing I'm just wondering if you can play like your own devil's advocate for a moment and um zero in on maybe something like my husband would be thinking that would be terrible about it yeah I I do um I I do like my gadgets um but um I for example I'm not invested in the in, in the apple uh environment so i'm i'm not going to save up five thousand dollars for the newest apple high uh, headset um i think the the potential especially in trades education is huge um I just i i don't even play online games right so, so the gaming aspect i can't really speak to um but I do see, um, just like similar to what Shannon uh, uh, said, I do see huge potential for either experiencing things more, um, more intensely than you would on the screen or in a book, um, and and being able to to direct, be more self directed in that learning. Um, but I, I actually, as somebody that is teaching in the trades, uh, I see I, I have not only this heavy duty um, uh, learning tool, this this simulator is is a good example where uh, I don't need to have the class go out and and everybody gets on the digger and digs uh, uh, and and loads a, a, um, a thing or. For example, um, in our in our uh, classes where we talk about uh, taking engines apart and and putting them back together, uh, if you could actually look inside the engine um, and and be self directed, you could learn. You, uh, students could learn a lot more than just by a presentation, and and that is kind of the core of my answer. If 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 that makes sense, is um, we are always talking about self-directed learning and and uh, people being invested in in learning and and so on by by giving them the tool to explore in an application as if they walk through this Mayan temple or as if they use a wrench on on this engine. Um, it's more of an experience than learning material inside uh yes yeah. I, I pointed yeah. out i pointed out so sorry just to finish off i did point out um because i was actually looking for drawbacks <laughs> because yeah. because i mean there there has to be there mm -hmm. have to be drawbacks and and i was looking for it and um and there are as i say but we are leaving we are leaving some people behind uh there are some uh some health effects that could be uh could be problematic although i've uh found credible research that kind of counteracted that a bit um and so there are a lot of questions still i think five to ten years is pro could be even optimistic for for getting this to a usable tool in training um so we'll have to wait and see yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I'm in the trade, so I can see how it would super benefit. You know, you wire up a transformer in the lab class, and it looks nothing like the transformer you wire up on a job site. They don't have many examples that they can trolley in of a lot of things. So I can see it being a benefit, but I can definitely see the drawbacks of the, um, people are already addicted to their phones. 
So are we going to get more addicted? I mean, you can obviously mitigate that. Like we're talking like a 15 minutes a day, right? On the virtual reality to get something way more out of it, right? So we're not talking eight hours, unless you're talking about people in the office, eight hours on a headset. But I don't know. I just feel like there's society drawbacks as well. I, you don't want to be a dinosaur and say we need to slug through the work, but it's also kind of like, do we need to go at the speed of light for everything? Um, yeah, I just wondered kind of what your thoughts on that were besides the ones you gave in the presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, those those are those are really good points, and and I totally agree. There is more not only on the technology side. Uh, there there's more that we need to take care of, right? Like there's there's yeah. more we need to uh, to learn and develop in order to be effective and productive with this and ethical i guess and ethical too, right yeah. yeah yeah any more questions i think i think that there are already companies that do use um uh virtual reality as a training sort of environment i actually applied before before becoming an instructor, I applied for a company called Race Rocks 3D, which is in Victoria here, where they um, they essentially uh, like they'll have a battleship layout. They, they have military applications where they'll have a, a battleship layout before the battleship has been built, and then you can run around on the battleship and get used to where the rooms are, where the uh, where the fire extinguisher is, how, where the controls are, that sort of thing. So I know it is being uh it is in use it's probably uh just developing it more and more um but it's a uh, if you go to racerocks3d.ca there's some there's an interesting video there that shows you how it's used in uh simulation and training uh, i'm a uh, i'm coming from the perspective of uh i teach a course in game design and or oh, cool. game development rather uh, i haven't done visual or virtual reality myself but one of my students did as as their project uh, a game in virtual reality uh for this past semester so it was really neat to see in uh them take the things i had taught them without knowing virtual reality and then build a game out of it and then show it to me as their final project so it's not a huge uh not a huge jump from the stuff that i'm teaching yeah cool that's interesting. Yeah, like uh, if you remember the presentation with the annoying video and the one the one slide, uh, that is actually stolen from the uh, Microsoft HoloLens website. If you if you Google Microsoft HoloLens, you can find the application. And one of the use cases I watched the video about was Mercedes Benz in the U.S. using um these headsets which is augmented reality so um they use them to support technicians so they have a support center somewhere central and the tech because cars get more and more complex so the technician would, would wear this headset um it would look into the engine compartment and the support technician remotely could um point out things in real life and and put um put like service procedures right on this right on the engine um and so they used it they use it as a communication tool right to save a lot of time for that i thought that was a fascinating uh, way of of doing it as well um and i like in the if if there is a if there's a use case like that that saves money, industry will definitely be all over that. <laughs> yeah, that's wicked. Currently, they pay my husband to drive out of town, stay in a hotel, make overtime, and point to things. So, you know, you'd be out a little bit of money for that, but good for the company, good for the customers. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? No, then I will send you into the sunny weekend. Enjoy. I don't think there are any more presentations in this course, but uh, and thank you very much for for the input. Uh, it, it was I did not count on uh, computer experts being in the class, but that was very helpful. Thank you very much, uh, and that's very cool. Like let's meet in ten years and with our VR headsets and and do this again.
Thank you very much. Good Have job. Good job, Fritja. Thanks, Fritja. Thanks. Thanks. Well done. Thanks.